thank you professor mohammad hafiz rahman and uh, thank you um, dr noel and his team for inviting me and at the organizing such an wonderful event of safes day and it is a great pleasure and honor for me to be here with this topic glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis uh, let me start with report of one of my patient a case scenario of a 50 year lady diagnosed as rheumatoid arthritis for last 2 years who is receiving um, prednisolone and gradually tapering doses with a plan to finally discontinue it but due to recurrent episodes of pain and as she is bearing a steroid card in an fear of uh, rescue therapy for adrenal crisis she is taking several high doses of steroid and so can it is difficult for her to con- discontinue with the steroid dose totally and she did not have any personal or family history of fracture she is menopause for one year her bmi is 27.2 kg per meter square with a t score of minus 2.5 at femur neck so how to plan management of osteoporosis for this particular patient and how to prevent fracture in my next few minutes uh, i like to get answer for this patient if i have a brief look of the mechanism of glucocorticoid induced bone loss actually there is a rapid early phase of bone resorption which decreases the bone mineral density and a slower progressive phase of impaired bone formation so the glucocorticoid excess has three effects on osteoclast osteocytes and osteoblast maintaining the early transient increase in osteoclastic activity causing increased osteoclast survival and increased bone resorption later on the osteoblast on the osteoblast it decreases the osteoblastogenesis and there is an early and continual decrease in the cancellous osteoblast and its activity and bone formation and finally on osteocytes it increases its apoptosis and causes osteonecrosis and fracture thus increasing the osteoporosis and fracture happens with the glucocorticoid treatment so who are at risk factors for osteoporosis while taking the os- glucocorticoid therapy few factors should be considered one is the glucocorticoid dose and duration high dose that is more than 7.5 mg of prednisolone uh, or more, for more than 3 months may or glucocorticoid associated myopathy and increased risk of falls so the risk for osteoporosis for glucocorticoid therapy and fracture and related to the underlying condition if the glucocorticoid is given for the diseases like rheumatoid arthritis angiolytic spondylitis inflammatory bowel disease which itself causes osteoporosis in that case the glucocorticoid therapy mediated osteoporosis is magnified in a much more high way and related to the risk of osteoporosis if the patient is more than 55 years white race female gender menopause smoking and alcohol intake and bone mineral density score less than 1.5 increased fall risk endocrine in presence of endocrine disorders all these precipitates fracture risk and osteoporosis risk in patients taking glucocorticoids there are few facts which are actually neglected in glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis and the important thing is while starting glucocorticoid the initiation of screening should be done from the very early and the vertebral fracture is very common among the patients taking glucocorticoids we start to increase from 3 months of therapy and peaks around 12 months and the vertebral fracture actually doubles than that of the hip fracture and while calculating the frax tool as we calculate it for determination of the level of osteoporosis the 10 year risk of major osteoporotic fracture and the risk of hip fracture should be calculated by the increasing the risk by 15 and 20% respectively for a prednisolone dose taking more than 7.5 mg daily so the patient getting a frax tool near normal may be not normal according to the prednisolone dose and patient who receives high dose of steroid more than the 7.5 mg per day the adjustment of this frax tool may underestimate the fracture risk so what are the treatment option in the non pharmacological option we should minimize the glucocorticoid use as the underlying disease permits and lifestyle recommendation should include the weight bearing exercise maintenance of normal weight smoking cessation limitation of alcohol consumption and assessment and management of fall risk in the pharmacological option the first thing is calcium and vitamin d should be provided properly as glucocorticoid increases calcium excretion through kidney so calcium and proper replacement of vitamin d is mandatory and regarding the pharmacological treatment the patients having glucocorticoid if had a fracture if more than 40 years of age and the adjusted 10 year risk more than 20% and the risk of hip fracture more than th- at least 3% then they should be treated for osteoporosis 
and T score less than 2.5 and men more than 40, 50 years and postmenopausal women getting glucocorticoid therapy should be treated for osteoporosis and prevention of fracture. The treatment option first line is the bisphosphonate and oral bisphosphonate may be helpful if there is no uh, side effects or contraindications and if there is any contraindications or side effects or patient is not adherent to the oral bisphosphonate then we can go for intravenous bisphosphonates. The other agents that may help is teriparatide, anabolic or it increases the bone formation and it has a greater increase in the BMD in the, the spine than bisphosphonate. Denosumab can also be used and raloxifen, a selective estrogen receptor modulator approved by FDA for prevention and treatment of glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis. Calcitonin can also be used. But one important thing is denosumab and teriparatide, if discontinued, the bone loss and fracture occur rapidly after its discontinuation. In that case, the patients getting teriparatide or denosumab, if discontinued, it should be later replaced by bisphosphonate. But there are very few areas of uncertainty in glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis in transplant patients who are getting high dose of glucocorticoids for a long time. But in them, it is not assessed the, for the fracture or the osteoporosis status. It should, be, of course, be assessed for all transplant patients for presence of osteoporosis. And the guide of assessment of glucocorticoid associated fracture among less than 40 years is also not is lacking and not defined. So tools to estimate the patient's uh, risk of glucocorticoid associated osteoporosis fractures in young patients should also be determined. And the natural history of the bone loss in the glucocorticoid therapy versus the postmenopausal uh, osteoporosis is different. So in, despite these differences, patients who receive the anti-osteoporotic therapy in the glucocorticoid users should not be similar to that of the postmenopausal woman. And regarding the target of anti-osteoporosis therapy, the higher dose of glucocorticoid is, uh, during the period of higher dose of glucocorticoid use, the bisphosphonate is required. When the dose is tapered to less than 2.5 milligram of prednisolone per day, in that case, only calcium and vitamin D supplementation may be helpful. So if I conclude for the, with the recommendation of my particular patient, the patient was a 50-year-old woman with rheumatoid arthritis and currently on tapering dose of prednisolone, though she is taking steroid for a long time and on the basis of the T-score, there is osteoporosis. And when I calculated the prax 10-year risk for major osteoporotic fracture, which is 18%, and the risk of teeth fracture is 3.8%, labeling her for a candidate for anti-resorptive therapy or bisphosphonate. And the prednisolone for her should be tapered as quickly as possible. And when we shift it to 2.5 mg per day, in that case, the assessment should be done again. And if the level is beyond the or above the level of the bisphosphonate level, then we can discontinue the bisphosphonate and go for the calcium and vitamin D intake. Along with this, the weight bearing exercise and strategies to prevent fall and prevention of fracture should also be considered. That's all from me for today. Thank you.